Tennessee's National Universities Commission. Number 2021, the first team of the two and two will be announced successful. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission maps suspended thrusters with fake 45 million naira. Hello, good morning. Welcome to NCL News. I'm Azim Nenwa for now. The news and details. The National Universities Commission, NUC, has clarified that it has not scraped mass communication as a course in the universities, but only divided it to enhance specialization. The NUC said the program has been divided into cinematography, media studies, public relations studies, advertising, broadcasting, film and multimedia studies, development communication studies, information and media studies. Spokesman for the body, Ibrahim Yakasa, is on Friday said that universities have the liberty to commence the new programs after securing NUC approval. He said we have unbundled mass communication but we did not scrap it. Any institution that wishes to retain it could and those that wish to break it into different programs can. There is no confusion. According to Yakasai, universities have to meet certain requirements before they can obtain approval to commence the new programs, stressing that the approval is not automatic. The approval is said is contingent on resource verification, adding that the NUC expected many institutions to offer the new courses. He described the initiative as an opportunity for schools to have more degree programs. The Nigerian Immigration Service, NIS, says that it has registered 80,000 migrants since the migrant e-registration commenced in July last year. The Comptroller General of NIS, Mohamed Babandi, says that for 5,000 of them, we are irregular migrants with 35,000 regular migrants. The CG said they also intercepted seven human trafficking victims being taken out of the country from November to December last year. He said the suspected human trafficker was intercepted with five female victims en route from Niger Republic to Europe on November 23. According to him, 37 underage children were also nabbed at Dankama on November 26, whilst 28 people being smuggled out of the country were arrested at Kongolam Castillo State on December 2nd by NIS officials. officers. Babando denied reports that immigration officers in Sokoto were collecting 200 naira bribes to allow illegal immigrants into the country. He said this in reaction to a report by Business Day that the NIS officials at checkpoints had indirectly legalized illegal migration since their cash for pass with their cash for, for pass attitudes. Spokesman for the body DCI, Sunday James, in a statement on Friday said the CG had ordered an investigation into the allegation. The Catholic Church has put a final seal on the abolition of the Osuka system in Igbo land with a Thanksgiving mass celebrated at the ancient town of Orevi in Aguato local government area of Anambra State. Recall that the traditional ceremony abolishing the over 500 years old obnoxious system was performed by the Opala Ewi. 13 Anthony Carvo on 14th September 2019, during which those he tried to refer to as Osu and the free people decided to put the past behind. At that ceremony, the traditional ruler of Arabi, His Royal Highness Ezenri Emmanuel Uriago, warned that henceforth anybody who referred to another person as Osu will be seriously dealt with. To drive home the importance of last year's ceremony, the Arabi community on Thursday invited the church to make Christian pronouncement banning the system in the entire Igbo land. 
Basilari Bishop of Oka Diocese, Most Reverend Jonas Benson Okoye, who was at the head of the celebration with five other priests, expressed happiness. It's a way with community for collaborating with the church in the abolition of a Suka system in the town, explaining that the Thanksgiving Mass was to conclude the exercise that began last year. Reverend Mosino Jerome Madreke, who delivered the homely at the church service, traced the origin of Osu in Igbo land, recalling that some people, out of sheer wickedness, were dedicated to idols for no justifiable reasons. He thanks already people for living up to Christ's injunctions by taking the bold step to abolish Osu in the community. The traditional ruler of the town is Royal Highness Ezenri Emmanuel Uriago, one that henceforth. Anybody in his domain who, discrimin who discriminated against others on the basis of the Sukkah system will face the full weight of traditional sanction. Ahead of the 2021 governorship election in Anambra State, Anglican and Pentecostal churches are teaming up to enthrone Governor Willie Obiano's successor. They claim that Anambra is not the exclusive preserve of any church. The declaration was made by Bishop Emmanuel Siyogyo of the Life of Faith Gospel Assembly, Mukwele Izunaka, in a new local government area. He spoke during the Christo Feast anniversary celebration of the church, which attracted many dignitaries from the state, including a governorship aspirant, Chidu Mwanko. The man of God said they were looking for someone that can deliver Anambra State from its present condition. Bishop Obiora made it clear to the crowd that the journey for 2021 in Anambra State has started already. Still on Southeast News, former United State Governor Roche has Okoracha's son-in-law, which also has rejoined the All Progressives Congress, says a faction of the party in the state. He also defected to Alshon Alliance and represented the party during the March 9, 2019 governorship election in the state after the APC denied him the ticket. A statement on Friday by the factional publicity secretary of the APC headed by Daniel Wafo in the state, Jones on one side said most one supporters have been welcomed back. On one side added, and I quote, we, have commend, we must commend Ifaya Arume for his support for the APC candidate for the Okiwe North Federal Constituency, and we look forward to welcoming him and his numerous supporters back to our party as soon as possible. End of quote. Following the confirmation of the outbreak of Lassa fever in a local community in other states by the state's Ministry of Health, a medical expert has sensitized the public on the need to be on alert on how to protect themselves from the disease. Ruto Hams completes the reports. Lassa fever was first discovered in 1969 from a case in the town of Lassa in Borno State. It is a zoonotic acute viral illness transmitted by rodents. Lassa hemorrhagic illness is spread by multi mammoth rat. Speaking to MCL News, a medical practitioner, Dr. Ugochuku Oko, spoke on the symptoms which include fever, headaches, bleeding, among others. He also said the disease can be transmitted from rodents to humans and through contact with infected persons. Lassa fever is a zoonotic disease, which means you can get it from eating an animal, uh, the animal known as uh, uh, Mastomis natalensis, belongs to the group of mouse known as Mortimamate mouse, a kind of a rat. If this rat urinates, on a gare or on any food or anything, either urinates or drop its own physics on those gare or food or anything you eat, that person will be infected. On the prevention of the disease, Dr. Gochuku had this to say. You don't need to eat rat again, no matter how delicious or how big the rat might be. Please don't see rat meat as delicious. If you have Anybody that is having chronic disease or being diagnosed of Lassa, just run away from the person. Because if 
the body fluids touches on you, that person is infected. You don't allow refuge, all these refuse dumps to be near your house. And that's why we're saying that government should try as much they could to make sure that they remove all the refuse that are near to the house or any place people are living. Because from there, they can, they can breed so many rodents. There's treatment. There's treatment. It was first discovered in 1979 by a man known as Professor Joel, I think Mark Brick. This man discovered a, a drug known as Rabaverin. This Rabaverin, you can give it in, as tablets, you can give it as injections, which if Lassa fever is diagnosed early and discovered early, and these drugs are given, you have a good uh, um, prognosis. According to the respondent, early prognosis and diagnosis is key in the treatment of patients with Lassa fever. He called on the government of Abia State to create a Lassa fever control office, which will see to the quick response and treatment of patients with Lassa fever. He also called on governmental and non-governmental organizations to organize orientation programs for the masses, workshops and training for medical personnel, as this will go a long way to eradicate the fever from the state. He also reiterated the importance of personal hygiene as the most efficient preventive measure against the disease. Ruth O'Hams, MCO News. Operatives of the Abuja Zonal Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have arrested two suspected fraudsters, Badamasi Sule and Muhammad Muhammad, for being in possession of counterfeit Naira notes totaling 45 million Naira. They were arrested in December 2019 following actionable intelligence report, which exposed a syndicate of fraudsters who specialized in printing fake 1,000 Naira notes. The suspects were also found to be in possession of fake $100 bills. A statement issued in Abuja on Friday by the EFCC spokesman Wilson Wujarin. Investigations revealed that the fake 1,000 Naira notes in two Ghana school packs in their possession were to be put into circulation. The syndicate was believed to be operating from Gashau, Yoba State, with its dispatch, dispatch lodge being a hotel located at Abacha Estate close to the Shelton Hotel in Taurus, Abuja. Still to come on MCL News, four Air Force officers shot dead hours after kidnap of four soldiers, two policemen. Medical experts have on diseases associated with dry season. Iran says it unintentionally shut down plane. Renowned author, Professor Shukweme Kaike dies at 89. Details of these are supposed to come your way after the break. Do stay with us. Hello, my name is Ruti. You can now watch your favorite TV station, MCO TV, anywhere you are around the world by following the simple procedure. Step 1. Go to Play Store and download the next TV app. Step 2. Look out for the next TV logo. Step 3. Sign in with your email, Facebook or Google account. Step 4. Click on entertainment to view MCO TV Arc TV channel. Step 5. Swipe to find MCO TV Art TV. Enjoy 24 hours entertainment at your concert. You can follow us on all our social media handle on Twitter at twitter.com slash at MCO TV Network. On YouTube at MCO TV YouTube slash MCO TV Network. Or Facebook web.facebook slash MCO TV Network.com. Or you can WhatsApp on the number 0803. 330 For more information on MCO TV app, please call the MCO TV customer care number 0703298089 or 0803737395. MCO TV, the world is your home. Alright, I'll get back to you.
Okay. We are here for the result. Wow, the lab result. Yes. Okay. Where is this man? She has malaria. Malaria? Yes. What, what do you think she did this for? Mm, we we prescribe a Casima tablet. Casima tablet? Yes, Casima tablet. Casima tablet get at meta and limit from thin for inside. Casima tablet now asking your brother's private limited for India. They make them, but now Grace Base Pharmacy and Store Limited. Now then they distribute Casima tablet for here. Casima tablet get now that approval for take fight malaria come out your family. Casima tablet now correct anti malaria. Casima tablets it they stop every malaria. You welcome back. For personnel of the Nigerian Air Force, now we are reportedly gone down by suspected bandits in Kaduna. This is coming barely 12 hours after the news of the abduction of four soldiers and two policemen along the Matsuru Madugui Road by Boko Haram terrorists. On the killing of four Air Force officers, sources revealed that the suspects laid an ambush for the security operatives as Ogoan Yako Close along Kaduna Pininbari Road. Report says that the soldiers are not usually on that spot, but because of the increase in the rate of insecurity in the area, the soldiers were deployed to the area on Thursday where they met their deaths. Reacting, Ibiko Leda Ramala, spokesperson of the Air Force, denied report of four dead personnel, saying that only one personnel was killed in the incident is worse. Troops of the 207-1 Nigerian Air Force, 9th Detachment, Beningwari, on Thursday night, January 2020, filed an ambush set up by over 70 armed bandits at Ogwan Yako along the Kaduna Beningwari Road in Kaduna State. He, stayed, he said in a statement on Friday. As the dry season surfaces, with its changes in the atmosphere, medical experts have advised residents to protect themselves against the diseases associated with the season. In this report, Ems News spoke with medical experts on the diseases that are prevalent during the dry season. The reports. Dry season is a season that comes after rainy season. During the season, diseases like cold, fever, asthma, malaria are said to be very common. With the hamatan ushering in the dry season, individuals are expected to protect themselves against the harsh weather. Against the backdrop, medical practitioners highlight on the causes, signs and symptoms of diseases associated with the dry season and how to prevent the illness. Cold and cancer. Uh, due to increase in uh, dustiness, we also have redness of the eye, we have conjunctivitis, and um, commonly called apnea. Um, and then we have um, a myriad of skin uh, conditions. If you are having a cold and catar, you are bound to have some coughings, um, so there are signs. And then um, we also have sore throat, or dryness of the throat. Um, we have difficulty. Um, in uh, passing up uh, some foods at times, you know, due to self truth. That's when there's, uh, you know, in terms of microorganisms, uh, through your throat, you know, causing uh, you know, bacterial or viral infections. Uh, food items will well covered and well cooked, and then uh, children should be given uh, good water. Um, you know, there's a lot of settling of dust uh, on, uh, on, on uh, water collections or what we use is storing water. So we, uh, we want parents to take proper care you know, of their children this time around, that they more you know, protective. When you look at dry season, you know that uh, the things that are prominent there is dust. You find out that people suffer mostly uh, from respiratory tract infections because of dust. Out refuse from the gutter and leave it on the road. 
when the wind comes, it blows it, and people will be collecting it. Then you, as an individual, are, don't allow yourself to, to don't, don't allow this dust. Try as much as possible. If you can wear, you know, respiratory uh, protector, you can wear it. Then your net, your window net, please try and clean it up from dust from time to time. Because if you don't, dust will accumulate on that net. And while you are sleeping, the wind will just be bringing you, will just be collecting the dust. Others who spoke off camera advised that effective and efficient precautionary measures should be put in place in order to avoid diseases that are common with dry season. Health, they say, is wealth. Avoid the negligence portrayed with the human body. Always visit a doctor when there is a change in your body. The use of mosquito nets, protective wears should be promoted during the dry season. And on the foreign scene, Iran's military says it unintentionally shot down a Ukrainian passenger jet. The statement released on Saturday morning said it had done so due to human error. Those responsible will be held accountable. The statement read on State T. On state TV said, Iran had previously rejected suggestions that one of its missiles brought down the plane near the capital Tehran on Wednesday. The crash of Ukraine International Airlines flight PX752 with the loss of 176 lives came just hours after Iran carried out missile strikes on two air bases housing U.S. forces in Iraq. U.S. media has speculated that the airliner may have been take, mistaken for a war plane as Iran prepared for possible U.S. retaliation. Great novelist Professor Chupomeka Ike is dead. He died on Thursday, January 9, 2020, in Nairi at the age of 89. Confirming his death, Denja Abdullah, immediate past president of Association of Nigerian Authors, ANA, told these men that the death of Professor Chukwemeka Ike can be tagged as signifying the end of an era as he was a contemporary of the likes of Chinua Chibe, John Munonye, Sipran Ekwensi, Nkenwanko, Flora Wanda, among others. He described him as a socially committed writer of a satirical, satiric streak whose works satirize the photos of the society and they are delightful to read with striking titles. Born on April 28, 1931, Professor E.K. was a Nigerian writer popular for his humor and satire. Like Achebe, his style of writing was influenced by his Igbo cultural upbringing. He studied history, English, and religious studies at the University of Ibadan and later earned a master's degree at Stanford University. He was former registrar at the West African Examinations as well as the author of Expo 77, a critical look at academic examination abuses in West Africa. Among his works are Toes for Supper, The Naked Ghost, The Potter's Wheel, Sunset at Dawn, Expo 77, and The Chicken Chasers. Others include The Bottled Leopard, Our Children Are Coming, and Conspiracy of Silence. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. And on sports, the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Diary, said that he is fully in support of the National Sports Commission Bill, stressing the need to return to the era after it was scraped by the President Muhammad Buhari's regime in 2015. Speaking as a guest on Sports Parliament program hosted by Shagun Odebami on Thursday night, Diary said that he is working closely with some federal lawmakers to move the bill from an executive one to a member bill. He said, yes, Beyond the Nigerian Football Federation bill that, that, that is waiting assent from the president, there is also the Sports Commission bill. I am in full support of it and it has gone through the first reading. The sports minister added that he is already in contact with various state governors on the need to have sports commissions. Sylvester Emmanuel and Oyino Mo Kodre maintained top sports in the latest men and women's singles rankings released by the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation on Wednesday. 
both players also topped the rankings released in December. While Kodri won all the national titles in 2019, Emmanuel won three out of the four. The CBN Open, the Renoi Open, and the Vemp Senior Open. He garnered 750 points ahead of Joseph Ime, who placed second with 540 points. Abdelmoumini, Moumini, Babu Lola, Thomas Otu, and Emmanuel Udoko are the top, fourth, and fifth ranked players. In the women's ranking, Kodja, who broke into the top three for the first time in July 19, sorry, in July 2019, is runaway leader with 850 points. Christy Agubom moved up one place to second with 270 points ahead of Aino Ayebusi, who has 220 points to rank Third. For my number one, Blessing Samuel is ranked fourth, while Patience Onebamion is placed fifth. And to end the news, a look at some major stories. The National Universities Commission, NUC, has clarified that it has not scraped mass communication as a course in the universities but only divided it to enhance specialization. Ahead of the 2021 governorship election in Anambra State, Anglican and Pentecostal churches are teaming up to enthrone Governor Willie Obiano's successor. We also told you that operatives of the Abuja Zone Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have arrested two suspected fraudsters by the Masi Sule and Muhammad Muhammad for being in possession of counterfeit Naira notes, totaling 45 million Naira. And on sports, the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Diary, said that he is fully in support of the National Sports Commission mission bill stressing the need to return to the era after it was scraped by the president Muhammad Buhari's regime in 2015. That was the news. Thanks for watching. Please do join us again by 8 a.m. for Good Morning Abia. I am Ezinewafo. Do have a nice day.